and sleep deprivation that is very troubling. Sleep deprivation? Mm-hmm. How yeah. so? Um, it's probably one of the most studied uh, phenomenon, the effects on the, on the mind and on the, on the brain, lack of sleep. And it's one of the classic techniques used by destructive cults, by the way, sleep deprivation. But if one analyzes American society, my understanding is that the average American is sleep deprived. Isn't that one of the things that Scientology supposedly does to those folks that they have that work for like pennies? The, what do they call them, the C Corps? Uh, uh, it's the it's a C org, C org, a billion yeah. year contract. Billion, isn't that hilarious? You sign a billion year contract. Yeah, um, and I want to mention that I was part of a uh, five day seminar in Toronto a few weeks ago called Getting Clear, and some of the top former officials of Scientology were interviewed on stage. I was on stage talking about hypnosis because Hubbard was a hypnotist, and mm. a lot of the processes in Scientology are straight out of a hypnosis textbook from the 20s and 30s, which is when Hubbard was reading about it. The processes and, like during auditing, is that what you mean? Yeah, so to sit with your f feet flat on the floor and your hands in your lap and you're closing your eyes and just being there. Not reacting for 20 minutes, the Scientologist will tell you, oh, Joe, you just licked your lips or your, your knee quivered. No, you've got to just freeze for 20 minutes. It's creating an altered state of consciousness known as trance. And I know we're going to talk more about trance, I'm sure. There's nothing wrong with trance states, but when you're in a trance state, you're more suggestible to mm. someone who has authority and who has an agenda to implant ideas in your head because you're not in your critical analytic part of your mind. Really? So just sitting for 20 minutes with your hands in your lap and your feet flat would lead you to be more influenced by someone's suggestions? That's, that's the first one. The next one is sitting opposite a Scientologist three feet away staring into the Scientologist's eyes for 20 minutes that's the lab. next that's the next one the Jamie, next... it's really hot in here Can you, <laughs> is ac on turn up and please. the next one after that is bull baiting where you have to stare straight forward and the scientologist tries to get you to react or what? respond it's like a bull with a red cape really yeah the... so they are training obedience they're oh. de de desensitizing people from normal social cues and interactions, and they're cultivating a, 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 a compliant, obedient, trance identity hmm. as a Scientologist. I didn't know that just staring at someone, just staring into someone's eyes can create an altered state of consciousness. A bunch of kids are going to listen to this. They're actually gonna get high. staring at staring a candle, at staring at a spot on a wall, what's known in hypnosis language as an eye fixation technique, is a very, very common technique for inducing an altered state of consciousness. Why? Because the eyes are pretty wired to move and scan. And, mm -hmm. when you fo and, and I should also say hypnosis is not sleep. It's an altered state of consciousness that's best characterized as concentration or absorption. Hmm. And, um, and I just want to say one more time, there's nothing wrong with that state. I like that state. I do self-hypnosis. I do meditation. I, there, I do many different altered states uh, techniques. The point is... I'm in control. <laughs> I'm right. deciding. I don't have somebody who's right. alienating me from my own inner th voice and my own self and trying to imprint me with an, a totalistic ideology that's black and white, us versus them, good versus evil. So let's talk about you. You you got into the Moonies. That's, and you were there for two years? Is that what it was?